Hey art folks, it's Shade, and today I'm going to show you how I went from painting this to painting this. Want to know how I did it? I'll show you. In the background, I'm going to have this time lapse of the second painting while I talk about our main topic, which is six ways to improve your painting. I felt while painting this new version of the strawberry that these six things really helped me out a lot, and I think they can be helpful for you too. But first, let's start with the old painting. Unfortunately, I don't have a video of the old painting. I did this in 2016, and I was doing it for an Instagram challenge. I think it was called Market Melody, and I painted a bunch of different fruits and vegetables and I remember being so excited and so happy with my paintings and actually I still think that these paintings are really cute I'm not here to try to say that oh my goodness look at how terrible my old paintings were I actually think that this strawberry has a pretty good amount of form to it and almost all of the techniques that I used in this strawberry I actually used on the new strawberry as well it's just that my skills got better so I'm going to tell you what I can see that I did with this strawberry just based on looking at it. So I know that I definitely used masking fluid to mask out the highlights on the edges of the strawberry, the little seeds, and also those super bright highlights on the top. And that's basically the same thing that I did in the new strawberry as well. The thing is though I can see that I wasn't really particular or I didn't have really good control of the masking fluid at the time. I hated masking fluid then, and to be honest, I'm still not the biggest fan of masking fluid, but there we are. One thing that I wish I did back then was put any kind of shattering on the seeds. The seeds are just straight up yellow. No seeds are going to be straight up yellow, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I think by the time I got to the seeds, I was just tired and I was done with this painting. I also used the lifting technique to get that little shine around the little depression that the seeds are in and I also put shadow around the seeds so that it gave it that little like dimpled effect and it looks like basically what I did is I put a wash over the entire thing when it had the masking fluid on and I think that helped me a lot with making sure that I had a good form because if you can vary your colors in that first wash of those first initial washes that will get you to have a lot better form and is a lot easier than having to go around and fiddle with that later. So I don't know how many washes that I did, but I can't imagine it was too many. Although I think back then I was really timid with my paints and both was a little scared of going too dark and a little unsure of how to go as dark as I wanted. So this painting kind of has the effect of feeling really blown out. And then I can also see that the leaves are not like the worst thing ever, but I can also see that I was just tired and I didn't want to paint this job anymore, which honestly, when you start feeling like that, just take a break. Step away from it for a second. <laughs> That's the best idea. So now let's talk about the new painting. There's a bunch of different things that I did to help me work this out. And the first thing I would say is to plan it out. I did so many different swatches when I attempted to do this strawberry, I took my own reference photo with one of the last strawberries of the season and I took a bunch of photos until I found one that I really liked and then I was really looking at all the colors that I had and thinking about all the color mixtures that I know about and trying to figure out what are the best colors to achieve what I want in the painting. Before, I think I was just like, well, strawberry is red and kind of yellow, so I'm going to use red and kind of yellow. It doesn't really seem like there was a really big variation in my color choice. But this time, I was definitely swatching all of my dark reds, swatching all of my middle reds, seeing if there's a difference between using quinacridone magenta and quinacridone cherry red, which yes, I ended up using so much quinacridone cherry red that I had to replace my pan. I swatched to see what colors would layer well together, what colors would lift well. I ended up using quinacridone color, so none of those lift that great, but I checked it out. And having all of that research really makes it so that when you get into the process of painting, especially something that's already complicated, 
you don't also have to worry about what colors are you using. I even went into a color editing program and color picked to make sure that I was seeing the colors correctly. If you're having a really hard time figuring out certain colors, that is a really good technique. You can color pick out your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows, and then you have a bunch of swatches that you can mix with your watercolors and be certain that those are the colors that you're actually seeing in the object. The next tip is try, try again. So before attempting this big version of the strawberry, I did a bunch of tiny versions. They're something like one fourth, most of them, and I think I also did some at one eighth size. And the point of this was to try out the colors, make sure that the colors that I just chose worked well together, try out different techniques. I did a version with lifting preparation. I did a version with colors that are easier to lift. I did a version with staining colors. I did a version with underpainting. I did a version with wet and wet. I did a version with wet on dry. I did so many different versions and you don't have to do this many versions, but you should do enough until you feel like you hit on a technique that you're like, yes, this is it. This is what makes me comfortable. And this is what I think will achieve the goal. And most of these little paintings, I actually didn't totally finish. I was able to tell whether or not it was working before it was completely done. So you don't have to spend hours and hours doing this but that can totally help you. Also, if you have an image editing software, for example, if you have Procreate or if you have Photoshop, you can even do these sort of tests on your computer or on your tablet. The thing to remember about that is that sometimes the things that you can do digitally are not the same things that you can do with watercolors. So it's definitely helpful, but it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. The next one is one that you may not have heard of or thought about, but it's Go Big. This painting is way bigger than the first painting. More than twice the size, maybe three times the size. I decided to go that big because it makes it so much easier to put in all of those little details. Of course, you could totally do a one-to-one -one ratio of a painting and that is the traditional scale for botanical illustration but unless you have an extremely steady hand and really good eyes it's always going to be easier to work bigger you don't have to worry that one little flick of the brush is going to destroy the entire painting you have a lot more room for washes you can see all of the details a lot better it's just really good of course, you don't want to go too big because then you have a whole different problem of taking forever to paint and dry. <laughs> the next thing is another slightly more unusual tip is get perspective. Personally, I normally paint watercolors flat on the table. If you are a drawer, you know that this causes a perspective issue. Having things flat down instead of straight up in front of you causes things to look longer than they actually are. And for me, a strawberry actually appears as a really complex pattern. And when I have it laying down in front of me and I have that stretched perspective, it becomes a lot more difficult to understand the patterns that are happening in the strawberry. So it was a lot easier for me to paint it on an easel. So if you're having trouble with understanding a complex shape or pattern, it could be useful to change your perspective. Take it from going flat to being straight up. That's also often makes it a lot easier to draw. Or maybe if you normally have it straight up on an easel, try putting it down flat and see if that changes your perspective. You may also want to step away from your painting because when you're painting really close up, it's easy to get caught up in the details and not actually see what the whole effect of what you're doing is and that was really important for this strawberry painting. My next tip is mix up your techniques. Like I said, I used a lot of the basically the same techniques that I used in the first strawberry, but I also added in more skills and more techniques that I didn't know about when I did this one. For example, at the time of painting the first one, I didn't know about underpainting, which if you've taken my portraits class, you know is 
my favorite thing for faces. So I thought, well, actually, a strawberry is also a complicated figure. I wonder if it would be really helpful to do an underpainting for the strawberry. And the answer was, yes, it was. <laughs> because then you had a roadmap in front of you. I had also learned in that time how to mix darks and to get desaturated colors. And of course, I totally used that in painting this strawberry as well. My skill in lifting had leveled up and I also was able to get better lifting brushes. So that also helped me a lot in this painting. So whenever you're feeling a little bit stuck, just think about all of the different tools and techniques that you have. You don't have to just do things one way. If you feel stuck doing wet on dry, think, well, how can I do this wet on wet? Would it be better or easier for me if I did? Or conversely, if you're struggling doing a wet on wet, think about, can I do this on wet on dry? Or can I combine the two in different layers? Which is exactly what I ended up doing in this painting. I did some layers wet on wet, in a giant wash and some layers went on dry and then I did lifting. So I just put everything together. Use all the tools that you have. And the last tip, and definitely the most important tip, is keep going. So many times you can see a painting, especially from someone who's just starting watercolor, and it's easy to see that the biggest mistake they made was stopping. Looking at the first job that I did, I can tell if I just kept going, I could have made it a lot better. And even when creating this newer strawberry, I had a sketch and I thought it was going terribly, so I just stopped. And then I came back to it later and I looked at that sketch and I was like, actually, this is really beautiful. I liked the freshness that I had about it. If I just kept going, it would have been so interesting to see how that would have developed. So sometimes you just need to give yourself maybe a break and then keep going. I know that's hard because it's easy to overwork watercolor and it can be scary to think about what would happen if you make a mistake, but so often the result that you're looking for could be there. It's not necessarily that you don't have the skill, you just have to keep going. And that's exactly what I did. I kept going until I got the strawberry that I wanted. And here it is. Do you guys think that's a big improvement? So if you're interested in learning how to paint this cute little strawberry, I have a class on Skillshare teaching you all about how to do it and how to paint any red subject. If you don't want to use Skillshare and you don't like subscriptions, I also have it available on Teachable. On all of my $10 and above patrons, get this and all of my courses for free. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that it was helpful. I hope you saw a little bit of my growth as an artist. See you guys next time. And until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye.